Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. And just like that, with a snap of the fingers, bullish sentiment is done. Guys, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trader uh, nightly wrap up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. So let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about it um, again. I, I think one of the biggest problems that and it, we spoke about this numerous times in the past. I, I, I think one of the biggest issues that new traders have they they are hell bent about being right. Okay. Nothing about trading is about being right. Again, nobody cares about what you talked about. Nobody cares about the call you made or the, the stock that you touted that worked out. Nobody cares, okay? Technical analysis and doing your research, it's all about being prepared the night before, okay? Uh, it's all about safety, putting yourself and putting your money at the most comfortable situation that you can handle mentally. Okay, that's all it is. So the ego game should be brushed out the door. The, the bravado game, and I was right, and you're wrong, and all that stuff, it means absolutely nothing. It, it's how you can sleep at night, okay? How you can take your capital, however way you've got it, and protect it until the day you die. And if again, if you are careless in this tape, and you continue to trade with blinders on, blinders on you're going to be gone. You're going to be a statistic. And I you know I see a lot of people uh, talking about this market reversal that we saw today uh, in the middle of the day, and they were shocked. How could somebody? How could somebody predict this? This market sell-off came over everything. Again, it's not about being right. It's about being prepared the night before. And today played out pretty much how we talked about last night in the video. You know, we talked about uh, this 228 level on the queues. Um, I thought this area was an incredibly important area that the bears, if they needed to defend any type of, you know, any type of conversation, that this was nothing more than a bear market bounce uh, versus a V-shaped recovery, they needed to make their stance. So the idea that somebody didn't see this coming is it's all about trading, I guess, like this, your eyes closed, your ears closed, your mouth closed, your rose colored glasses on, and you're hoping to God that nobody sees this. But again, professional traders, when they're doing their chart work, when they're researching the night before, okay, we're not looking for the alpha, we're looking for the dangers that could be right in front of us, it's like going into a dark alley, okay? Would you go into a dark alley with no lights on, with everything, hoping to God you get out of there alive? No, you just don't go into a dark alley. And technical analysis is there to protect you. It, show you. it shows you what your worst case scenario is. Of course, look, we're looking for measure potential. We're looking to see uh, which way the wind is gonna blow. But ultimately, we're trying to put ourselves in a position that our money is safe, will continue to be safe, that we can continue to stay in business. And one of the things that we talk about all the time is emotional buyers meeting technical sellers and emotional sellers meeting technical buyers. And again, that is the 101 uh, most purest form of technical analysis. And I think if you really ignore the signs, and again, you don't need to listen, you know, you don't need to listen to anything I say or watch uh, any of the videos, like nightly videos. But, but again, if you went into today's session, okay, and you didn't put in that macro chart work from the night before, you were the emotional buyer. You believe that, again, nothing could harm you. You believe that this is a Teflon market. And for, for the last 45 days, it has been. But it has been on technical levels that kept on getting rejected, that kept on getting reclaimed and remounted and going higher. And now we're kind of in this weird area, okay? And you're starting to see a lot of the really aggressive perm uh, PERMA bears. Uh, even, for example, Stanley Drunkenmiller came out you know, really, really legendary investor uh, came out uh, after the close and said, this is the most aggressive area that you can possibly put your money. Literally now, not yesterday, not the day before, not a week ago, not two weeks ago, not three weeks ago. Now that we got this rally and we had this massive you know, reversal intraday, 
Now he comes out and said, wait, 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 let me add the fuel to the fire. This is the most aggressive area that you can possibly put your money. Now, look, maybe he's right. Maybe he's not. We don't know. Okay. Anything that we were talking about last night on the video of a potential rejection of the 228 level, we weren't talking about. Okay. I wasn't talking about the idea as, well, that's it. Market's over, right? Market's over. We're going to retest the lows. See, told you the economy sucks. Uh, California, uh, California, I think uh, just talked about uh, after the close that the governor, I believe so. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I, I believe the governor extended an extra three months of the stay at home policy. Things are not looking great, right? So again, this is enough ammunition that the bear has to kind of make their claim. Now, again, it sounds easier than it does, right? It's never the case. Now the bears need to confirm today's price action. They need to make sure there's enough people that got caught, right? Got caught with their hand in the cookie jar, with their hand in the mousetrap on this 228 level on the queues that they say no mouse tomorrow and starts kind of a waterfall effect uh, back into the next support zone. And the most important part of what we saw in this sell off today, okay, was, num was two things. Number one, we saw that last gasp. We talked about it uh, at Morning Strategy. I believe that we're going to get that last push. Okay, and we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. But then I believe that the bulls did not reclaim that level, which they didn't, got rejected once again, back-to-back uh, -back days. We were going to get a move back uh, to the five-day moving average. Not only did we get a move back to the five-day moving average, we closed below. And again, if, you, if this is the first time you're watching uh, any of my videos, the five-day moving average for me is the absolute most important short-term indicator for short-term sentiment. If the bulls reclaim back the five-day moving average tomorrow on a close, obviously, you know, the train is still on the tracks. If the bears confirm today's price action, then we're going to go down to the 10 and any close below the 10 day moving average, we're going to go all the way down to here. Now, again, this still represents a very, very strong, aggressive upside bias channel. But again, we're not looking to make macro calls. We don't care for right. We're looking to trade day by day, channel by channel, trade by trade. All we're looking to do for the next day, which is tomorrow, is get enough indication that tell us that we are on the right track to which way the wind is going to blow. And, you know, I looked at, I looked at a whole bunch of charts. I went through all the NASDAQ 100 members. Uh, I went through uh, the Dow 30 members. And I'll be honest with you, if you look, if you do your homework for tonight, okay, you will see that any stock closed below the five day moving average, those are the stocks you want to pay attention to tomorrow, okay? Because if they confirm the shortest short-term sentiment, we are going to get a second-day follow-through of sell-offs. And, and again, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, if you look at the queues, right? If you look at the queues, they close right below the five-day moving average. Look what happened to Boeing, right? We talked about Boeing, uh, and we'll talk about the individual pivot in a second. But look what happened when Boeing confirmed the five-day, right? You see this? I just want to show you exactly what we could be in store for tomorrow. So yesterday, Boeing hit the five-day moving average, which is 128. Everybody see that, right? Yesterday, it hit the five-day moving average, and then it bounced. Today, we confirmed the five-day moving average, and the stock dropped. So if you look at the cues, for just, to, you know, just for all you people who are kind of new to trading to get an idea, a visual idea, sometimes, again, you want to see it visually, right? So here are the cues. Today, we tested the five-day moving average, closed below. If we confirm the five-day moving average, right, and we start confirming today's price target, price action, then we go all the way down to the 10-day moving average. Again, hence the whole point of the PS60 theory, stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand. And if you go through the members, and again, it shouldn't take you a long time to look at your, uh, to look at your uh, charts tonight, okay? It will take you 10 minutes to go, five, 10 minutes to go through the NASDAQ 100, and it'll take you a minute, okay, to go through the Dow Jones Industrial members. All you need, again, simplify the, uh, the day for tomorrow. Stocks that test the support today, if they confirm tomorrow, they should go lower. If the market gaps up tomorrow, and that's, the, in my opinion, the, the worst thing that the, the, the bulls want to see tomorrow is a gap up. Because if these stocks gap up based on how we close into the five-day moving average, and go green to red and confirm today's price action, it will be a nasty, nasty sell-off. And again, again, the, the, the sell-off is in the eyes of the beholder. I'm looking for at least, you know, again, I'm looking, if you believe in the theory, supply to supply, demand to demand, I'm looking for at least a three, three and a half dollar move on the Qs initially. Again, nobody's talking about the lows. 
yet. Cart before the horse, right? Steps by steps, baby steps. And until that happens, again, this is just an opinion, okay? Until we confirm today's price action tomorrow, uh, again, this is nothing more than just a setup that needs to be validated. Uh, so again, today played out pretty much like we thought, right? Pretty much how we thought yesterday, uh, we're gonna get stuck at supply and then start, things are gonna start rolling over. So, you know, let's talk about it, right? You, you didn't have a lot of pivots. It wasn't one of those days that you were going to have 10, 15 pivots pivot because again, it wasn't a one big macro surge. There was a lot of names coming off of kind of a rounding top when you get rejected. You're still going to get that late stage dip buyers that believe that the market will never go down, whether it's macro or just even gravity. So they were still buying a lot of names uh, into rising support, but we lost that rising support and that sell off came you know, after three o'clock. Um, so it's very, very important to understand that every single day, you don't need to, to really step on the gas with all your might. Sometimes you just need to kind of roll, right? Kind of roll, kind of go, you know, 30, 40, 50 miles an hour until you get that opening lane. And that's when you start putting the pedal to metal. So let's talk about today. Uh, Amazon, I liked it for today. I, I thought, you know, this could get one more push and it didn't, right? Great pivot yesterday. Uh, needs to reclaim for, uh, for uh, 24, 21. Uh, obviously never did that. So here's the Amazon chart, right? Here's the Amazon chart. Here's the 60 minute channel I was looking at never came close. Okay. So again, we had to wait. Uh, Tulo, Tulo, uh, Roku, Roku is a, a quick move, a uh, quick move here. Uh, never confirmed the next channel, which was kind of weird because it did confirm the daily uh, and the 60 minute in the morning. And this is kind of your first clue that stocks started to slow down a little bit. So uh, 134 needs to build. And here is here is Roku, right? So 134 built It took out this whole range here and it went up a dollar, right? Went up a dollar and now we're sitting there and we're like, oh, okay, so where's the next channel? 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 Again, buyer strike. That's exactly what we were talking about the other day. When stocks get tired, again, they don't need a reason to go down. They just get tired. Uh, Netflix, again, we're still waiting for that 445 area. Obviously never got there. Again, here's a, a perfect example of a quick scalp. That's all we were looking for today, just because we were looking for a directional bias confirmation, whether it's rejected off that 228 level or reclaiming go higher. So uh, here are the early morning notes, uh, 134.75. Uh, 135 needs to build. I said scalp only. Again, we saw what, what Beyond did. Beyond absolutely exploded today, but I believe this was the only trade today uh, into the 136 area. And again, obviously it got to the 136 area because the stock really, really exploded. But here's kind of what I thought, right? So here's the 130, what was right here? So here was the 134.75, 135 area. Honestly, I thought it was going to just get here, right? I thought it was going to get here into the 136, uh, 136 and change, which it did. It came back in and then later in the day, it absolutely exploded. Exploded, but again, we weren't going. We, we weren't in the mindset that we we're going to have a really aggressive continuation today, just because uh, all the points we covered. But again, nothing wrong with that. Uh, Baba, again, this is a perfect example. Another example of stocks that got tired. So Baba, two hundred seven, two hundred seven a quarter uh, needs to build, right? And again, here's a perfect example. Here's the 207, 207 and a quarter, and it got rejected again at 208. So again, never gave you a second entry on this thing. Again, another perfect example, stocks were getting tired. Uh, Boeing, and again, this is the first one that really cracked. Uh, Boeing 128 daily support held yesterday. If it builds below, it can flush. Uh, again, I know a lot of you guys are still holding puts overnight. Again, here's the 128 that we discussed, right? Here's the 128, which was yesterday's low. It took that out, started building, uh, closed at 125. Again, this thing confirms, again, remember, this whole channel is still measured potential to the, to the 119, 120 levels. So this is still uh, very much on the table. Again, quick hits on Apple, right? 218 rejection needs to build. Again, we were just in scalp mode today, right? So here was Apple. Here was the 218, right? Here was the 218 level right over here, right? 218 level and the stock, you know, put up a move, you know, the 219, 319 and change. Again, if you can see here, there's a lot of similarities with Roku, Alibaba and Apple. It gave that last gasp, right? It gave you the cash flow, gave that last gasp. It gassed out, started rolling over. Again, picking up clues as we go along that's correlated with the one with the 228 rejection. Uh, ZM needs to build, never got there. Uh, Tesla put up a move. Uh, again, obviously it wasn't 334. Again, excuse the, the dyslexia. It was obviously 8, 8, 834 needs to build. You know, put up a, 
four or five dollar candle. It's kind of all over the place today. Um, again, it did give cash flow, gave a pretty good move, but again, very, very choppy. That I, I didn't even trade Tesla today. Uh, this was a, actually a really good move. Congratulations for all you guys who took that. Uh, 186, 60, 186. If it builds below, it can reverse down. Experienced traders only. And it was a nice move. Too low was a really nice move here. Uh, you can see here this morning, right? So you can see here this morning, this whole 86 area right here uh, went down right to this uh, 81 area. I said it's going to get down to 181 and change. That was the rising 60 minute support. That's a, exactly what it got to. Uh, so too low, take on the way down. And I said here, here's the first. Support, right? It got down to 8160s on too low. Uh, beyond, again, perfect. You know, got into the 136s, okay? So Baba now needs uh, to reclaim 208, that never got to. Roku needs to reclaim 135, which never got to. Uh, Netflix, again, got to the 44 area and then just died. Again, stocks getting very, very tired. And then I basically said for the rest of the, you know, rest of the morning, I look, these ranges are super tired. These strong stocks that are rallying nonstop over and over again, they're gassed out. The, our window in the morning, it's closing. You can tell this, the, the ranges are contracting. Just sit tight. Just sit very, very tight. And the next thing you know, uh, towards the afternoon, again, any close under 128 is bearish. Uh, Boeing really set the tone, and then everything else got really, really plugged. Uh, and again, tomorrow is setting up for you know a line in the sand day for the bulls. So if the bulls believe that this was truly a, you know, a V-shaped recovery, um, again, they got to step up because if this five-day moving average uh, does confirm tomorrow, okay, and a lot of these names confirm with it, we are going to have a second day of selling. Easiest thing to do is to kind of get yourself in the mindset of what you should be looking at. Again, guys, just go through these charts very, very quickly. Uh, the NASDAQ 100, the diamonds, look for the members, anything that closed on the five day or below it, that's your targeting audience for tomorrow because that is confirmation of short term sentiment. Guys, God bless. Have a great night. I'll Congratulations see you for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.